Hello, my name is Philippe Chirin, a professor in the history department at McNeese State University. And I am Mary Roundtree. I work in the local area. Welcome to Your Grandma Rocks, where we explore the lives of famous women in history. Welcome and bienvenue à nos amis francophones. Vous écoutez la radio de l'Université McNeese. On the program today, music and history as we retrace the life of remarkable women. She was an international movie star of the 1970s. Then she descended into a spiral of drug abuse, emotional turmoil, and self-destruction. And then... She was simply forgotten. Until the 2010s when she became a symbol of the Me Too movement. Her name was... Maria Schneider, or Maria Schneider if you prefer. Along the way, we will explore the notorious movie Last Tango in Paris. A warning to our listeners, today's program is intended for a more mature audience because we're tackling some very adult issues here. Along the way, in honor of Mary Schneider, we'll sample songs with the name Maria... In the title. That seems oddly specific. How many of them can there be? You'd be surprised. Well, let's see. Mary. There's, of course, a bunch of Ave Marias by Schubert and others. And by Beyonce. That's right. Then, of course, quite a few songs in Spanish or about Latinas, like Maria from West Side Story, or Maria, My Rage Against the Machine, or there's Maria by Ricky Martin. I'll do you one better. Santana has a song called Maria Maria. Maria Maria, you got me. And then some country songs too have Maria in the title, like Maria Shut Up and Kiss Me by Will Nelson. So which one of those will we listen to today? None. We'll start with a French song about a little girl named Maria, or Marie in French. Here's Petit Marie by Francis Cabrel. Petite Marie, je parle de toi parce qu'avec ta petite voix Tes petites manies Tu as versé sur ma vie Des milliers de roses Petite furie Je me bats pour toi Pour que dans Dix mille ans de ça On se retrouve à l'abri Sous un ciel Si joli que des milliers De roses Je viens du ciel Et les étoiles entre elles Parle que de toi D'un musicien Qui fait jouer ses mains Sur un morceau de bois De leur amour Plus bleu Que le ciel autour Petite Marie Je t'attends transi Sous une tuile Ton toit me vend de la nuit froide Me renvoie la balade que j'avais écrite pour toi Petite furie, tu dis que la vie C'est une bague à chaque doigt Au soleil de Floride Moi mes poches sont vides Et mes yeux pleurent de froid Je viens du ciel et les étoiles entre elles ne parlent que de toi D'un musicien qui fait jouer ses mains sur un morceau de bois De leur amour plus bleu que le ciel Dans la pénombre de ta rue, petite Marie, m'entends-tu? Je n'attends Bonjour and welcome back to Your Grammar Rocks. C'était Petite Marie par Francis Cabrel. Je m'appelle Philippe Girard. And I'm Mary. Today we're exploring the life of another French woman named Marie, the actress Marie Schneider. Let's start at the beginning. She was born in Paris, France in 1952. A lot of women we've portrayed on the show I've had. Difficult childhoods, to say the least. Does that apply to her too? Definitely. She was the daughter of Marie Schneider, a Romanian model, and Daniel Gélin, a famous French actor. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Well, except that her parents were not married, and then her dad refused to recognize her. So, in fact, Maria did not get to meet her dad until she was in her teens. 
So basically, she grew up in the margins, raised by a bohemian mom and rejected by a dad who wouldn't include her in her own official family. That's right. So by age 15, uh, young Maria left her home altogether so that she could live on her own in Paris as a struggling actress slash model. Oh, this is where the famous actress Bouget Bardot who was appalled by the way that Maria's dad had behaved, took her under her wing. Which is kind of ironic. Uh, We did another show on Brigitte Bardot, and she was far from the best mother herself when it came to her own child, which she pretty much abandoned. Well, at any rate, that's when Maria Schneider's acting career began. She did a bunch of small parts until she was cast as a main role in the movie Last Tango in Paris. The director, Bernardo Bertolucci, was a promising Italian filmmaker. So this movie could be her big break. And Maria, at that point, was still an unknown, but Bertolucci picked her anyway for the main role because she looked like, quote, a Lolita, but more perverse. In retrospect, that's a red flag right there. The male lead was a much bigger name, Marlon Brando, fresh off from his star turn in the first Godfather movie. Fun fact, Marlon Brando was actually not the first choice of the director, Bertolucci. Uh, Bertolucci first contacted all the big French stars from that period, from Jean-Louis Trintignant. The star of And God Created a Woman and A Man and a Woman. That's true. And also Jean-Paul Belmondo was contacted. The star from Breathless. And Alain Delon. The star from Purple Noon. And all of them rejected the role. Why so? Well, they read the script, that's why. They found the movie way too racy to their taste. That's saying a lot. And, you know, God Create a Woman and Breathless were pretty racy too. So these actors were used to the nudity. Well, Last Tango in Paris was on a whole other level. But somehow, Marlon Brando was up for it. To be fair, in the grand tradition of male-directed cinema, the main actress would do the most of the nude scenes. Marlon Brando didn't show that much skin. And that main actress was a troubled teenager named Maria Schneider. We'll get to her star-making role in a minute. First... A song. What's next on your list? Another Maria song, surprise. Take a Letter Maria by R.B. Greaves, which was released in 1969, right before the shooting of Last Tango in Paris. It's hard to understand. Welcome back. I'm Mary, co-host of Your Grandma Rocks, your favorite woman's history show on KBYS. Et je suis Philippe Girard. Vous écoutez la radio de l'Université McNeese. Before the break, we discussed the difficult upbringing of Maria Schneider a young French art actress best known for her role in Last Tango in Paris. All right, set the stage for us, will you? Many of our listeners probably never saw the movie. Well, it's in Paris, duh. And it focuses on a torrid love affair between an American businessman in his 40s, Paul. Who's played by Marlon Brando, of course. And a young woman, Jean. Who is played by our topic today, Maria Schneider, who was just 19 at the time. The two first meet while they're apartment hunting in Paris, and they bump into each other in some... Apartment. They flirt. More specifically, he puts his hand between her legs. Ooh, and right. Though she's apparently okay with it, things get a little steamy, a little fast, and before you know it, we're treated to our first scene of hot, rough sex between Paul and Jean. To be clear, they don't even know each other's name at that point. Paul, i.e. Marlon Brando, likes it that way. This way they can have raw, uninhibited sex without being influenced by what they know about each other's age, job, marital background, or what have you. So basically, the opposite of a typical first date, where you quiz the other person on their favorite movie and their pet's name before you get frisky. That's right. That's the first of many steamy scenes in the movie. Yes, and before we get any further, a second warning to our viewers that today's show is more adult oriented. Correct. In one notorious scene, Jean is masturbating in front of Paul when he tells her to insert two fingers into her anus. Or as he puts it, quote, right up into the ass of death to find the womb of fear. God, he writes lines like that. Well, the director, Bertolucci initially, but Marlon Brando by 1972 was a major star with a reputation as a loose cannon, so he himself improvised many of these lines, often borrowing directly from his own private life. Speaking of anuses and improvised lines... Wow. (laughs) Not sure where this sentence is going. Well, it's just a segue to introduce our listeners to the most famous or infamous sex scene in the movie. The one with the stick of butter? That's right. I'll try to keep it PG, but at some point, Marlon Brando asks Maria Schneider to go fetch a stick of butter in the kitchen. She does not understand why until he uses the butter as a lubricant and performs anal sex on her. 
while she cries and says, no, three times, I must add. And she's pinned to the floor. That's correct. There's a lot of rough sex in the movie, but that scene is definitely painful to watch. <laughs> wow. It's a lot to take in one setting. I think we need to take a breather. <laughs> That's right. Uh, do you have another Maria song for us? Well, actually, I do. This one, somewhat appropriately, is about a stripper in dire need of love. Here's Dear Maria, Count Me In by the American rock band All Time Low. Bonjour à tous and welcome back to Your Grammar Rocks on KBYS. This was Dear Miriam, Count Me In, released in 2008. Je suis Philippe Girard. And I'm Mary. Today we're covering the life of a French actress, Maria Schneider, who achieved worldwide fame long before 2008. In 1972, to be precise, when she starred in Last Tango in Paris. Before our musical break, we saw how this movie retraced a torrid love affair between a middle-aged character, played by Marilyn Brando, and a teenager played by Mariah Schneider. Toward and abusive, one notorious scene involved anal rape. Correct. So, how did the public react to the movie when it came out? It's not kind of the type of movie that will leave you indifferent. Well, the public's reaction was definitely love it or hate it. Okay, so let's start with the hate. The graphic depiction of sexuality must have triggered the censors. You're correct. In the US, the movie initially got an X rating, which meant that you could not see it in a regular movie theater. So they had to edit the movie once again and cut many shots just so that they could get the rating down to an R and ensure some widespread release outside of the porn circuit. And even then, conservative commentators were appalled. Uh, William F. Buckley, for example, called the movie pornography disguised as art. In Italy, the movie was so controversial that the director, Bernardo Bertolucci, was sentenced to a two-month suspended prison sentence for obscenity. He also lost his citizenship rights and had to surrender his Italian passport. But then, the movie was also a major hit with audiences worldwide, including in Italy itself, where 7 million people saw the movie Last Tango in Paris before the courts in Italy ordered the film negatives destroyed. Most professional critics in France and the U.S. loved the movie seeing it as a breakthrough moment in the sexual revolution. Maria Schneider played two type in interviews. She explained that she was a bisexual who had slept with 50 men and 70 women. But then there was more to the movie's success than just shock value. Uh, you remember how William F. Buckley described Last Tango in Paris as pornography disguised as art? Well, that was meant as an insult, but this was exactly what Bertolucci had in mind. He wanted to bring frank depictions of sex out of the dark alleys and into the mainstream, into art. Like the movie Deep Throat. I know you did a show about Linda Lovelace before. Yeah, exactly, except that Deep Throat was still a low-budget porn movie shot in Florida over the course of a week for a few thousand bucks. 
Uh, by contrast, Last Tango in Paris, that was real cinema. It had high production value, it had an international movie star in the main role, and it also explored important themes like the nature of sex in a modern society. Uh, Pauline Cael, a reviewer for The New Yorker, compared Last Tango in Paris to The Rite of Spring by Igor Stravinsky, uh, which also had made a huge fuss when it premiered in 1913, uh, triggering a riot at the time. Uh, but then in the long run, uh, it came to be accepted as a classic. All wells that end well, right? A young actress gets her big break in a major motion picture that becomes a worldwide sensation. What are we going to talk about for the rest of the show? Uh, buckle up, we're just getting started. The worst is yet to come. <laughs> Uh oh, stay tuned then. But first, let's take another musical break. Another Marie in the title? Uh, two, in fact, and the singer's name too. This is Marie Douceur Marie Colère by Marie Laforêt. It's adapted from an American hit, so let's see if you can figure out what the original song was. Marie douceur, c'est ainsi que tu me surnommes Tu crois bien sûr me connaître mieux que personne Marie colère existe aussi, fais bien attention Je te l'ai jadis cent mille fois sur tous les temps Marie douceur a beaucoup, beaucoup de patience Oui, mais un jour tu verras entrer dans la danse. Marie colère avec des éclairs dans les yeux. Je sais le cœur aura le plus peur de nous deux. Marie danseur est avec toi bien trop gentille. Si tu persistes à regarder les This was Marie Colère, Marie Douceur, a 1966 French cover of Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones. You're listening to Your Grandma Rocks on KVYS, and I'm Mary. Et je suis Philippe. Uh, today, we are retracing the life of another Marie, Maria Schneider. So far, we've covered Maria's rise to stardom following her mega hit, Last Tango in Paris, which was both adored and reviled by critics for its portrayal of modern sex. Normally, having a breakthrough role like this should be a godsend for a 19-year-old actress. But her success was almost too big. The role came to define Maria Schneider so much that she could not escape from its shadow. In 1975, she played with Jack Nicholson in the movie The Passenger by another major Italian director, Michelangelo Antonioni. But it was pretty much a reprise of her, the, the role that she played in Last Tango in Paris. In the credits, her role was listed as the girl. Talk about being a sex object. She went from having sex with Marlon Brando's character in Last Tango in Paris, who did not want to know her name, and then to having more sex with Jack Nicholson in a role where she was just entitled as the girl. By the way, Maria Schneider was also offered a sex-heavy part in the notorious film Caligula, which she declined. I felt very sad because I was treated like a sex symbol, she later explained in an interview. I wanted to be recognized as an actress, and the whole scandal and aftermath of the film turned me a little crazy, and I had a breakdown. Ooh, what kind of breakdown are we talking about? Well... It was the 70s, so we're talking about a rocky love life, a suicide attempt, some scary episodes involving some hard drugs. She also had a reputation as an actress who was difficult to work with. Uh, she walked off the set of the movie The Babysitter by René Clément uh, so that she could be checked into a mental hospital. 
And then she got into an argument with Louis Buñuel on the set of that obscure object of desire, and she got fired from that movie as a result. Wow. Antonioni, Clément, Buñuel, these are all major names. Yes, yes, but within 10 years, her career had passed its peak. You know, the, the danger of being typecast as a young baby doll is that within a few years, well, you kind of outgrow that role. What about Marlon Brando? How did he deal with the success of Last Tango in Paris? Well, he hated the movie. Uh, but when that movie came out, uh, he was already a major star with plenty of movies under his belt. So it was much easier to brush the whole thing off and move on to other projects, including a little movie called Apocalypse Now. That's true. Marlon Brando was 48 when the movie was made and Maria Schneider was 19. He wasn't defined by that one movie the way she was. Long story short, by the 1980s, Maria Schneider was a washed up actress relegated to lesser roles. By the 1990s, she was largely forgotten except by movie buffs like myself. And the Daily Mail. In 2007, a journalist from the paper interviewed her and of course asked her about the notorious butter stick seen in Last Tango in Paris. And that's where she dropped the bombshell. Marie Schneider w revealed that she had not been told in advance about the scene, which was dropped on her in a way that was pretty overwhelming. To be clear, the sex was simulated in the movie, so she was not actually raped by Marlon Brando on the set. But she was brutally pinned to the floor and made to act out a rape scene without being forewarned ahead of time. Let's hear how she described it in that Daily Mail interview. During the scene, even though what Marlon was doing wasn't real, I was crying real tears. I felt humiliated, to be honest. I felt a little raped, both by Marlon and b by Bertolucci. After the scene, Marlon didn't console me or apologize. Thankfully, there was just one take. And that was a pretty shocking revelation. By that point, Bertolucci had become a world-renowned director, so you'd think the revelation would have made headlines everywhere. But the interview barely made a splash. In 2013, Bertolucci discussed the same scene in an interview of his own and confirmed that he didn't warn Maria Schneider that she would act out a rape scene because, quote, I wanted her to react as a girl, not as an actress. I wanted her to react humiliated. So he pretty much confessed. Right. Here's more from the interview. I feel guilty, but I do not regret. You know, to make movies is something to obtain something. I think that you have to be completely free. I didn't want Maria to act her humiliation, her rage. I wanted Maria to feel, not to act, the rage and the humiliation. Amazingly, that interview did not make a splash either, until 2016 when the interview was reposted on a Spanish website in honor of the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And that's when that interview went viral. So, how do you explain that no one seemed to care about the issue for years, even when those two interviews came out? And all of a sudden, people begin to obsess over a movie that was 50 years old by that point. Two words. Me too. You mean the Me Too movement? Yes, I do. Well, that makes sense. By 2016, people were finally paying attention to the power relationship between powerful male producers and directors in Hollywood and young actresses. Last Tango in Paris definitely spoke to the heart of the issue. A director in his 30s and a movie star in his 40s coerced an actress in her teens to play in a rape scene against her informed consent. Again, Maria Schneider was not physically raped in the movie, though there was so much belated furor over that scene that by 2016, many people thought that it was actually the case. Uh, we're talking only about psychological abuse here. It's interesting how the people who loved the movie in the 70s were the same people who hated it in the 2010s. What do you mean? Well, when the movie came out in 1972, the people lining up in New York City to see the movie would have been liberals supporting the sexual revolution, correct? Right. And the people investing the movie in 2016 would have been liberal feminists as well? That's correct. Actually, The New Yorker, which had published a glowing review of Last Night in Paris in 1972, did another article that was a complete 180 in 2018. That movie is really a Rorschach test about the sexual attitudes of its time. What about France? Did views of the movie also change there? Well, yes and no. Uh, there was a French version of the Me Too movement. It was called Balance ton port. 
Basically, denounce the pig who sexually abused you in the workplace. Yes, that's the translation. Uh, but then in the movie industry in France, a lot of people stood by Bertolucci, or for that matter, Roman Polanski, another famous director who was also in hot water for accusations of sexual misconduct with a 13-year-old going back to the 70s. And despite those controversies, Bertolucci got an honorary Palme d'Or at the Cannes Festival in 2011, and Roman Polanski got the César Award for the Best Director in 2020 at the French equivalent of the Academy Awards. Wow. I can't imagine Howard Weinstein getting an honorary Oscar from an Academy anytime. I might speak to the French intelligentsia's reverence for artists. Uh, Bertolucci's behavior on set may have crossed the line, but some French people thought that it was okay if it was in the name of art. At least that's how Bertolucci presented it. Remember his interview? As a filmmaker, you have to be completely free. Well, we'll have to let our listeners make up their own mind on that. Let's have our last musical break. Another Maria song? Yep. It's by Blondie. And surprise, it's called Maria. Bienvenue à tous. This was Maria by Blondie. Je m'appelle Philippe Girard. And I'm Mary. You're listening to Your Grandma Rocks on KBYS. Today we retrace the life of Maria Schneider, an actress made famous by the 1972 classic Last Tango in Paris, and more recently by the Me Too movement. So, how did she react to the worldwide hoopla that broke out in 2016? She did not react at all. Sadly, she had died of cancer in 2011. You mean, before people finally paid attention to all her public revelations? That's correct. That's sad. Well... At least she got some belated recognition for her career, and she helped bring attention to the difficult issue of sexual abuse in the film industry. That's correct. Well, what a life. We're glad we could share it with you. Quelle vie incroyable, en effet.